Abscast. So, Paul Pogba, a generational talent, a mercurial figure. He's been found guilty of doping. So the news that has been coming out of Italy in the last couple of days is that Paul Pogba, who failed a drugs test, a doping test, uh, at the start of this season, has now had his ban formally applied through the Italian doping courts. Now, <clears throat> for anyone who's unaware of what happened with this story, very early on in the season, in August of 2023, uh, at the first or the second game of the Italian season, Paul Pogba failed a doping test. So just like in most other sports, you do a urine sample at random, uh, and it was found to contain some form of banned substance. Now... As you can imagine, Pogba disputed that, and he asked for a subsequent uh, sample to be tested. And that was also positive. Now, what he has been found guilty of is taking something called DHEA, which is a, a supplement which you can take as a tablet or capsule. And it basically helps the body produce more hormones. So it's kind of like increasing the, the natural ingredients that we all have to produce more hormones. And specifically in athletes, it can help with the production of testosterone. Now, testosterone, as we all know, apart from making you butch, um, it can help with performance. It can help you stronger. It can help you be faster. It can help you recover from injuries quicker. So it certainly helps elevate your performance levels. So all of his samples relating to that time and subsequently, uh, were found to be in breach of all levels, all guidelines. So it's pretty clear that the, the doping uh, breach is accurate. So Paul was then um, subsequently suspended by his club Juventus for several months. And then in February of 2024, it was announced through the Italian doping courts um, that Paul Pogba had been given a four-year ban from football. Now, that is a pretty standard ban. Four years is a, is a typical ban because the Italian doping authorities are part of the international doping group called WADA. And you've probably heard of WADA through combat sports um, and Olympic sports and all that kind of thing. So this four-year sort of boxed standard uh, ban that they give out is it doesn't matter what sport you're in. Uh, they dish it out so that whether you are in an Olympic cycle, because that happens in four years, whether you are in a, a footballer for a World Cup or a Euro cycle, because that's every four years. And the idea is if you were to, to be found cheating in and around that kind of major event, the ban would mean that you would miss at least one of the next subsequent events. Um, so that's why, for example, in boxing, which is an Olympic sport, if you're found cheating, um, if you if you found doping, um, as part of that Olympic cycle, you can have a four year, you can have a four year ban. If you cooperate and you take a plea bargain, sometimes it's reduced to two years. And in some cases, sometimes it's an arbitrary, like a six month ban or something, depending on what the substance is, what the levels were <clears throat> and, and how sort of cooperative you are during the whole process. So the background is in August of 2023, Paul Pogba, in all of the samples that he gave, um, he was found to have breached um, the DHEA levels for hormonal production of testosterone and all that kind of thing. Now, uh, Paul Pogba was offered a plea bargain, which would have helped reduce that sentence, the length of the ban, potentially. And he re he refused that. He has maintained his innocence, although we haven't explicitly heard what his um, reasoning or excuses are. He has said, even in light of this ruling, he's going to fight it and he's going to take it to the Court of Arbitration for Sport. But as it stands, Paul Pogba, who very shortly is about to turn 31 years old, is facing a four-year ban. So there are two questions, ignoring any of the background. And they are, what's going to happen now? So what are the potential outcomes? And then secondly, what's going to happen to Paul Pogba? Well, in the first instance, the outcome is... He will either be successful with what he is claiming, or he won't be. Now, <clears throat> the ban itself 
Um, a little bit like what we saw recently with Ivan Tony for his betting infringements. It basically states that Paul Pogba is banned from all footballing activity for four years as it stands. Now, he's allowed to go running in a park. He can go and run a marathon. He can keep himself fit in the gym. He can buy a thousand footballs. He can take, um, or he can he can get himself a, a personal coach, a footballing coach, at his own expense, and he can do what most kids do all over the world. And he can practice his skills, keep himself fit, try and keep himself sharp. He can do all of that, but he's not allowed to do that within any form of association or organization or team, whether it's amateur or professional. He's banned. He can't go to the training ground. He can't use their gym. He's not allowed, at least uh, within their premises, to train with anyone in the footballing community. And no one in the footballing community is allowed to help him train. So if there's an ex-teammate, for example, uh, if we take Dusan Valvic, the striker at Juventus, he is not allowed to help train Paul Pogba. So the ban kind of works two ways. He's not allowed to have any kind of benefit, improvement, anything of that nature to do with football for these four years. So what does that mean in terms of the, the, the fight against his ban that he's going through? Well, his argument is, according to his statement, that he has never knowingly ingested or taken anything directly or as a supplement which contained DHEA, or any other additive or substance which might help with the production of any hormone, testosterone, or any anything else. The problem is, as we've seen in combat sports recently with fighters like Conor Ben, any athlete of a professional level, Olympic sport or non-Olympic sport, faces something called strict liability. Now, strict liability is very, very simple. In plain English, it means you, as the athlete or sports person, are responsible for whatever you put into your body. So if you want to maintain healthy uh, levels of, of everything, that means you've got to drink enough water. And if you're not going to drink enough water and dehyd dehydrate yourself, that's your own damn fault. Equally, you know that by being a professional sports person, you are not allowed to take any kind of banned substance and the levels that they, they measure within your blood and urine can't go above a certain threshold. It is your responsibility as the athlete, not your club or organization or athletics club, or if you're a combat fighter, your manager, your promoter, you and solely you responsibility for whatever goes into your body. So Paul Pogba needs to have one hell of an excuse to explain how, with every sample he's put forward so far, he had elevated levels, uh, which of course shows that he was gaining an advantage, you know, doping, whatever. Whether he was ill, whether he's recovering from a little knock or a, a, sm a small strain, it doesn't matter. You're not allowed to put anything in which might aid you, give you an advantage. It's got to be a level playing field. Now, the threshold for that with the Court of Arbitration for Sport is really, really high. So it's, it's good luck, really, for Paul Pogba. He's got to have some kind of amazing evidence to kind of get this sort of um, this ban sort of reduced because it's currently sat at four years. So what is the potential outcome of this if he was to produce some kind of magical evidence? It's unlikely he's going to get it reduced to something like six months because of the nature of the doping offence and the fact that every sample has been found to have been in breach. So he's probably looking, with four years as it is at the moment, his best bet would be to have it reduced to two. That's probably his absolute best outcome. And it might be depending on the nature of his of his evidence and the, and the quality of his argument, it might be that a compromise, like a plea bargain, could be found where he gets a three-year ban. So they're probably the iterations that we're looking at. There is actually another one, which is to say that if his uh, argument was so... Um, not complacent, but if it was so arrogant, if it was so far-fetched, <clears throat> if it looked like he was purely arguing for arguing's sake... There is precedent for them to increase it from four years, but that's very unlikely. So let's say realistically we're looking at four years, three years as a as a sort of a, a compromise, or two years as a as a best outcome. The next question is from when? So the original offence took place in August of 2023. The standard practice is you backdate any ban to the date of that offence. Not the secondary sample, the first sample. So if we were to say that a four-year ban was upheld, then it would be 
August or possibly even the September um, of 2027 when Paul Pogba would be allowed back into football. There is a precedent, depending on that argument, that the date of the ban doesn't have to be the August or even when they did a secondary sample test. They can do it from the date of the, uh, the jurisdiction. So when they have a hearing, the trial, if you like, at the Court of Arbitration for Sport, depending on how Paul presents himself, carries himself, his language, the type of his argument, they could say, you have shown such dissent, such disregard, such dishonesty for this entire process. The ban will start from the date of this hearing. So if we uphold that four-year ban, it will start from now, which could actually mean, depending on when that date is set, could actually be a four and a half or even a five-year ban. So we could be looking at a 2028 or later uh, return for Paul Pogba back into football. So that length of ban is huge. So to answer our first question, what does that mean in terms of the process? Depending on how that hearing is staged and when that hearing date is set, we could be looking at a four and a half to a five year period very easily before Paul Pogba is allowed back into football. Question two then, so what does that mean for Paul Pogba? Well, it's a very good question because all we seem to have done is ask questions about Paul Pogba. When he returned to Manchester United and Thierry Henry on Sky Sports asked him, so uh, what's your best position and what is it you actually do? Even Paul Pogba couldn't couldn't answer. You only have to remember how many times Graham Sunas would ask what it is he does, why is he there? Probably his his weekly favourite topic, wasn't it, whilst he was a pundit? What is Paul Pogba? Who is Paul Pogba? He's definitely an unfulfilled talent. So the question is, um, if a four-year ban is upheld, and even if the original uh, offence date of August 2023 is the date that that starts from. What does that mean? Well, the date when it elapses, that four-year period, would mean that he's allowed to come back to a football club or sporting organisation to use the gym, to, to sign a contract, to use their training facilities. Now, he's free to do whatever he wants in his spare time. He can run every day, go to the gym every day, practice his football skills, but that will only get him so far as anyone who's played any level of the game will tell you. You've got to be training regularly. You've got to be playing regularly in order for you to be match fit and match sharp. It's not just enough to be generally fit. There's that next level as well. So the date of the ban elapsing is when he can come back to get into that training regime. That's going to take him a little bit of time to... Uh, get fit and sharp and ready to play any level of football because when you consider where he plays which is that midfield area of the pitch the most congested the most athletic the fastest paced arguably the most important um and contested area of the pitch that's going to take him a while to get into a condition where he can mix it with 24 25 26 year olds um the age of Paul Pogba is also interesting because if you give him a two or three month period to get himself fit and to get himself in con into contention where at any semi-decent high level he could be considered to play, he's going to be almost 35 years of age. He won't have kicked a football for four years or longer. It could take him six months or a year to get back into the flow where his touch is good and his peripheral vision and the scanning is good and he can jockey and he can use his strength and he can compete at a high level, at a high pace for 70, 80, 90 minutes. I mean, that's that's not easy to do if you've been out of, out of it for so long. So, I mean, you could be looking at 35, 35 and a half. I mean, that's that's difficult. So... If that ban is upheld, and, you know, worst case, it's from the August 2023 date of offence, realistically, Paul Pogba's career at the highest level is over. I mean, it's one thing for a quality player, and we're looking at somebody like a Kevin De Bruyne, or somebody like a Fernandinho, who was at Man City as well recently, consistently, barring the odd injury, from the age of 15, 16, 18, when they break into the first team, to play for a whole career, where they've got 
periods of training where they've got the you know cryogenics and all the rest of it to to, to preserve to rest and recuperate then they have their pre-season and you're in that cycle it's one thing in that element for the very best to be 35 36 38 and competing at a high level but if you're 30 31 and it's taken away from you for four years it is very difficult if not impossible to get it back now if we look at the combat sports world arguably the most famous fighter that's ever lived is muhammad ali now when muhammad ali burst on the scene as cassius clay after winning gold in rome 1960 olympics until around 1967 when he was banned for refusing to enter the draft for uh, the vietnam war that period that seven year period cassius clay was all about speed reflexes his his movement with his feet his ability to anticipate a punch his ring iq he was just a step ahead of everyone but then he had two three plus years out of the ring had a couple of warm-up fights and of course he had fight of the century with joe frazier in 1971 but the fighter that Ali was after that period of inactivity was night and day, chalk and cheese, to what he was like beforehand. He hadn't trained as regularly, he hadn't fought as regularly, and that ability to anticipate and that speed and those reflexes were gone. And Ali had to change as a fighter. And the same with Paul Pogba. Paul Pogba's never been like a Patrick Vieira, all-action, combative midfielder. He's been a bit more of a Rolls-Royce silky player. But he's had a great stride. He's been able to mix it in terms of strength and speed, athleticism and stamina when he wants to switch it on. At 35, having not kicked a ball for four, four and a half years, that's a very difficult switch to, to, to flick back on. And it may well be, if that ban is upheld, that this is the last we see of Paul Pogba at a very high level. Now, Paul Pogba, the name, World Cup winner, the fact that he's a practicing Muslim may well have um, a high demand in an Arabic league. So if the Saudi Pro League is still throwing money around uh, like loose change, it may well be that he can go there for a few years for a payday. Um, that's a lot of ifs and buts, of course. But in terms of his competitive European adventure, that would probably be curtains. So what is Paul Pogba's best bet? His best bet, if he's looking to continue and see his challenge through and fight through the Court of Arbitration for Sport, is to try and do a plea to see if he can get his ban reduced to three years, because at least then he'd be around 33 when he returns to training. If he's kept himself fit, if he has a really good preseason, he may be able to play Serie A, which is a little bit of a lower, a lower pace league. Um... I mean, 33 is easier than 35 uh, in terms of coming back. Um, of course, if he could, he'd love to reduce that to, say, a two-year ban. That's going to be a tall order for him. But he, he really needs to come at it with, you know, the sympathy vote, as much evidence as he, can, as he can show that he was being given stuff without his knowledge, maybe without any labels, maybe if it was being mixed into his food. Um... But yeah, anything less or anything more than a three-year ban from the date of the offence, which would make him older than 33, oh, that's, that's a tall order to come back from. So as it stands, Pogba is banned for four years, and he could be as old as 35 before we see him on a pitch again. So realistically, that is his top flight career over. So we have to watch this space and see what happens. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please, please, please don't forget to hit like and subscribe and I'll catch you again very, very soon.